How's it going, everybody? For those of you who may not know, I am the gringo half of Gringo and Talon, and I kind of want to do something a little different today. Now, in the back, you will see kind of a paywall chart I had made for characters. I was going to bring this out a couple of months ago, but Netmarble posted a message saying that they were going to start to listen to the players. So I wanted to give them a couple of updates, see what they do, see if they improved. In my opinion, they have not really done a very good job, so here we are right now. Now, for this paywall chart, I'm going to try to go through it kind of quickly to save some time, so I will post a link in the description, so if people want to look it up and see what's kind of been going on in the game from the information I've gathered about the updates, then they can do that. Now, what you'll see here is the version history. You will see the characters that were re released in each update. The characters in white are the free-to-plays, the characters in yellow are the paywalls, the blue ones are the ones you pay crystals for, whether it's Danger Room, Epic Quest, Store, whatever. And the two at the bottom, Dormammu and Odin, are the characters that they changed to Crystal Wall. So as you scroll over, I have the total number of characters in each update, just so I could have a easier look at the running total to add it to. If you go over one more, you see the pay and premium in update, so... Basically, the number of characters in each update that were either paid or premium, so there were no characters in the first, like, seven or eight updates, so zero. The first one was Carnage, so I marked when they added paywalls or premium characters in blue and the number. And then the next line is basically just a running total, so you have the one paid or premium in Carnage, and then it goes up by another one when you add Hyperion, and then another one later on. And then you get the total of 48 at the bottom as of the Baron Zemo Taskmaster Viper update. Now this all leads into the last column, which is cut off for a second. Sorry about that. And the last column is basically the column that is the most important, and that is the percent of paid and premium characters. Now when you see it in purple, that percentage did not change for that update, which means there were basically no premium or paywall characters added in the beginning and then the two you see down in the lower part there were just no characters added for that update because it was just a bunch of uniforms now when you see it in green on the side that means there were paid in premium characters update so that percentage of paid in premium characters compared to the total number of characters in the game at the time is going to go up when you see it in red, that total is going to go down, which means there were no characters that were paid or premium added in those updates. Now this is important because you'll notice a trend as it starts with Carnage, and then you have the first premium character or paywall with Carnage. Then you have a few updates in between. There's another one added with Hyperion, a few updates in between, then you have two, and then it kind of trickles off and then as you go down there's a lot more green until it basically just goes into green altogether which means they're adding paid or premium characters in each update and this is the the same thing that's happening with uniforms and the same way the game's going so first they started with like no real paid kind of content and then they started with the legendary battles and they started adding those more often and then with the uniforms you had them starting at 750, then they went to 1250, then they went to 1750, then they went to 2500, and now we have two paid uniforms. Yes, they are seasonal uniforms, but they are still paid uniforms. And this has gotten to the point where it's, I'm not trying to complain, but there has to be a limit. And until you tell Net Marble that, hey, this is the limit I'm willing to pay you for, then Netmarble is just going to keep adding and adding on. So to a point, yes, it is kind of complaining that I'm doing right now to a point, but at the same time, Netmarble is asking for our opinions, and I'm giving them my opinion right now, and my opinion is there should be less premium and paid characters because that is the main draw to your game at the moment. Now, I'm not saying all characters should be free to play because that would basically put Netmarble out of business, and I do not mind paying for characters. It's just, I need, for me personally, I need to feel that I can kind of keep up with what's going on with paid characters and stuff. When they were adding one like every other update, I was fine with that. I can get a bio sub this update, 
wait for the next character, and then get two bio subs and finish both the characters off. So then they'd get three bio subs out of two characters from me, and then they'd probably get some Stark stashes. Now I'm at the point where I don't get the bio subs, I don't get the X genes, and maybe I get a Stark stash like once every four months because they raise the price on the price on that too. And so you may be asking, if you see the the bottom right here, the twenty two point five four percent in the very bottom right corner, and that is as of the Baron Zemo Taskmaster Viper update. So that percentage is obviously going to go up with Professor X, Mr. Sinister, and Mystique. Now, what I'm going to do right now is kind of give my opinion on it. And my opinion is that the, the paid and premium characters should kind of be around between 15 and 18%. The perfect percentage for me would be 16.5%, but with so many characters in the game, it's not going to be perfect, so you can lean either way. Now, the 16.5% averages out to about 1 in 6 characters. And this is kind of the in-between for me, where I think it's still kind of fair to net marble, because they can make 1 out of every 6 characters, either paid or premium. And then it's kind of fair to the players, too, because they can get, like, 5 characters. So it's... I'm trying not to ask for too much from net marble. I'm trying to give, like, a little give and take here with something people are probably will more willing to keep up with. Now, if you look up here for the blue part, you'll see premium and in parentheses crystals. To me, crystal characters are paid characters. They are not pay wall characters, but they are paid characters. If Netmarble puts a character in the game, for crystals, they are putting that character in the game with the intent to make money off of that character. So that, to me, is paid content. It's the same with uniforms. Now, some people collecting their free-to-play crystals may be able to afford one of these characters every once in a while. But when Netmarble puts one of those characters along with five uniforms in the same update, they may be thinking that, hey, everybody's going to get this character for free, but then they're going to pay for the crystals to buy all of our uniforms. So in turn, that is paid content. So that's just kind of how I view it personally. If they put something in the game with intent to make money off of it, I considered that paid content. Not necessarily the same as paywall characters, but it is paid content. Okay. Now that we are done with this part, we can move on to the second part of the video. Let me switch and I will be right back. Okay, we are back here for the second half of part one of our trilogy of Dear Net Marble series videos. And for this one, I just kind of wanted to go over the game modes, what I think has been positive, what's been negative, and possibly what Net Marble can fix in the future if they're listening uh, about like the last five or six updates since they started kind of changing or upgraded or getting rid of game modes. So we'll kind of hopefully go over this kind of quick because I recorded this already and it was like 38 minutes and I was like, I'm not putting a 38 minute second part of this out. So for the positives, for Danger Room, the only thing I can really see about it right now is it's a new game mode. There's not a lot of positives. Story mode, the ability to choose different skill effects for when you get to certain parts in the story, that was kind of cool. Um, dimension missions, the only thing I really liked was that you can get uniform upgrade kits from the support shop. Giant boss raid was good because for me it's the first game mode where the game mode actually lasts longer than the opening loading. And squad battle... Um, I put supposedly will make unusable characters usable again because I typed this up right before the update dropped. So I actually wanted to wait to put out this video to see what the game mode was like. And from what I'm kind of getting out of it right now, squad battle for me is just kind of like a cheaper version of an alliance battle. And I'm not really using a large variety of the roster I normally don't use anyway, so that's kind of a flop for me. Now for the negatives, of course Danger Room has poor matchmaking. 
you're going to get the people that are going to quit because you don't choose the leadership they want. You don't pick the character they tell you to choose or they don't get the character they want. So that is going to lead into the next things of the rewards being subpar for the effort required. Because by the time you finally find a match, if people don't quit or it doesn't drop or whatever, then the rewards are just kind of lacking there. Um, for story mode, I'm just going to say it's basically to me it's like a cheap marvel ultimate alliance game now like they added the traps and stuff that are just there and it just makes it a lot more tedious and time consuming and it doesn't really make it more fun um there's a lot of options that have been taken away from players so you can't really farm for experience you can't use your whole roster you can't collect the bios you want for sure you can't farm the urus you can only use the three characters they give you uh, no auto play you can't skip between levels so you can't play like stage two and then go to stage five you have to play stage three just a lot of stuff like that and then another big one was odin became a crystal wall so it's just a lot of stuff that was basically taken away from players which is the part that i don't like because it was nice having the choice of if i wanted to do these things i could do these things now i don't have the choice I have to do it net marbles way and I can only get more RNG rewards and crap like that. Uh, dimension missions, for me, it's basically like dimension rifts with glitter on top. All they did from special missions and villain siege to add to that was basically put the characters you can get from those game modes into the shop and they, they didn't really do that. So to me, it was kind of a, a lazy update where it was another thing where they take away your choice again. So you couldn't choose like, before you could choose special missions. Which ones do you want to do? You have the 20 levels a day. So you have to farm really smart. You can pick what character you wanted to farm and then farm them over time. You had the characters like Dormammu in the quest packs. So you can work on those over time. So they gave you a reason to actually go back to the ones that were already in the game, which was really nice. They switched that. Of course, Dormammu became another crystal wall character like Odin. And there's a really high energy cost like there would be with Dimension Rifts. So like the low energy cost that was from story missions and special missions and stuff that you could use to kind of farm up characters experience and stuff. That's kind of been taken away. Okay, so what you see here are just going to be more positives and negatives that I came up with that are my personal positives and negatives. As you can see, some of the positives are kind of just simple things or just kind of lame things based on what Netmarble said. Uh, the negatives way outweigh the positives here, kind of like they did with the game modes. I'll just go over a couple of them to keep it a little shorter. Uh, characters being paid or given with no grind, basically what I mean by that is most of the characters being added to the game now are paywall characters of some sort, or a lot of the characters are just given to you for like logging in and stuff like that, or you could just use like bio selectors on characters and get them right away. So it's taken away the grind in the game that made you really appreciate getting the characters over time. Uh, they've added kind of a all or nothing thing when upgrading gear. So what I mean by that is you used to be able to upgrade your gear either one roll at a time or you could upgrade it by level. Now it's either one roll at a time or you have to use everything you have in succession. So you can get like one gear from 15 to 18, but then your other gears are all stuck at 15. I would like them to bring the option back to upgrade the gears one level at a time because it was a lot less time consuming than hitting the button and getting only one roll each time you're hitting the button and it was a lot more, uh, what do I want to say? It was a lot better, I guess, than having to use all of your bios or X genes at once and get one gear to 19 and keep the others at like 15 when you could get them like all to 17 and then have like the extra Uru slot stats. Uh, the too many buy this pop-ups, what I mean by that is a lot of people have probably seen this. When you log into the game, there's a pop-up. When you go into dimension missions, there's a pop-up. Sometimes when you go into World Boss, there's a pop-up. Basically what they could do with this, take all the pop-ups that you have, when you log into the game, have them there, and then you can swipe left or swipe right for people that want to see what other options they have on stuff they could buy. Now, when going into some of the possible changes that we have here, the first thing I want to talk about is something I do not have on here, and that has to do with the event missions in the game. The events are very repetitive, they're kind of lame, 
I'm kind of tired of having to do the same things like, hey, play five timeline battles or play this new game mode that you don't want to play. And these missions, basically what they do is they force you to play stuff that you don't really want to do, which is kind of okay. But the part where it's not really okay is when you have the event missions for 14 days in a row, you have 50 coins a day, and you force people to have to log in every day, play all those missions every day, and make sure that they collect everything every day. Because you could play all the missions every day, but if you forget to collect those coins on one day, then you're out of the running for whatever the top prize is, and right now that's the Mega Tier 2 rank up ticket. Now what they could do to kind of alleviate this a little bit would be they could add like three or four days on the end of the event, keep the same event missions up, and cap the event currency, whatever it's going to be, coins or whatever, at like the 700 limit that it would be at right now to get the very top prize. Now, this would give people more time to be able to play the event. They wouldn't feel like they have to log in every day. And if they accidentally miss something, then they can just do it on the next day or the day after, and they can still get to that 700 limit. So it's not a big change, but it's enough that it would help a lot of people out. Now, getting back to the ones I have here, story mode, story mode would be a simple change. You'd keep the new story mode you did, but you would bring back the old one too. This way people could farm their bios, they could farm their urus, they could have Odin as a free-to-play character, and the new story mode could basically just supplement it. And the new story mode would be there so that the newer players coming into the game could kind of play that, and they can get Iron Man, Captain America, and Black Widow ranked up really early. For special missions, I would bring those back too, just the way they were, and kind of as a added bonus maybe, because the updates recently have been kind of souring to a lot of people, I would just add a new one. Add the World War Hulk one. It's a kind of a theme you've already had in Marvel. We've seen some of the characters in the movies. And the characters that I would put for the missions would be Meek, Korg, LOA, Hero M, and Brood. You'd put Kyera in there as a shifter, and you can have, have Red King in there as the quest pack character, which would basically be like the Dormammu for it. Now what I would do differently from this is I would not put the new characters that are in this in the bio selectors. Keep them out of the bio selectors. Make people have to farm them again. You bring back the 20 missions a day limit so that they have to get the shifters and they have to actually work for the characters because when you work for stuff, you appreciate it more. Yeah, you can still get all the other characters that were before with the bio selector and you can still get these characters with the bio sub if you want to pay to get ahead. So there you go, Netmarble. There's your paid part of it. But people have the option to farm these slowly and hopefully not everybody would have these like five minutes after the update drops. Now, for the Villain Siege, I would basically revamp it again. I would do a Fear Itself update, and I would take the nine main heroes in Odin and the eight main villains in the Serpent from it. So the heroes would be Iron Man, Spider-Man, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Wolverine, Captain Marvel, Iron Fist, Doctor Strange, Red She-Hulk, and Odin. The villains would be Sin, Juggernaut, Atuma, Titania, Absorbing Man, Hulk, Grey Gargoyle, The Thing, and The Serpent. And basically what you would do with this would be, I would take it so you would basically have the heroes in one set and the villains in another set here. So you have a little bit of a difference from before. Only your villains as the player, you can only use villains to fight the hero side and you can only use heroes to fight the villain side. Now you would bring back the three tries per day that you had before and all of the nine main heroes and the eight main villains would be unlocked every day for you to fight. Now, each week, you would beat all nine villains, and then you would get a shot at Odin. And then you would beat all eight, or sorry, all nine heroes and get a shot at Odin. And then you would beat all eight villains to get a shot at the serpent. And this makes it so that you can kind of bump up the rewards once you beat Odin and the Serpent. It would get more playtime on the game mode. It, it You could just basically make it more fun. Now, this game mode would reset once a week with Shadowlands, so you got to make sure you beat all nine of the heroes and all eight of the villains. The reason why they're up every day would be so that you can choose the days that you want to beat whoever you want to beat. 
Uh, the enemies in this would basically be there to be overpowered. They would be like World Boss Ultimate or something. Like they would get that increase in power level, and that's basically what Fear itself was. Was it was a bunch of characters just getting souped up and overpowered. Now, a lot of characters in this would also get reworks, like Sin and Titania and Azori Man, like characters that have been added to the game and have not been touched since they've been added to the game. Maybe you can even give Odin a tier 3 in this update. You could also get a few characters added to the game with Red, She-Hulk, Atuma, Grey Gargoyle, and the Serpent. Make all those characters free to play because Netmarble, where you are going to make your money off this update, is off of those nine heroes, Odin, and the eight villains. Every one of them can get a uniform, and you can justify making those uniforms maybe seventeen fifty. If you make Odin good enough, maybe you can even make him 2500 So there's still ways to make money off of these updates, but basically still give back to the players too. So you make the money off your uniforms, and you give the players the four characters listed there all free to play. Maybe the serpent is collected only through villain siege though. Maybe you get like one of his bios by beating him each week or something like that. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Sorry if it ran a little long. Hope everybody is doing happy, well, and is safe and healthy. I uh, hope to see you all in part two.